guess what day it is? It's not hump day. It's part two day because I've actually been, being, I've actually been getting requests from a poor part two. If I could speak, we could get through this video much quicker. And part two on what? Part two on the saga of my Badger grips. These are the sport grips. And uh, as you can tell, they came back. They actually came back a while ago. I, I just didn't have time to make another video. Sorry, folks. They came back, and as promised, they looked fantastic. You can't tell anything about the fit and finish. And now, you, since I'm using an actual high-definition camera, you can really see. Um, and what they do? They said they were going to make a speed loader cutout. Well, let's spin the merry-go-round. As you can see, it's not a cutout per se, like on my old trusty model 64 that I carried on duty. That's a cutout down here. What they did do, apparently, is they removed material. Let me see if I get my big head out of the way. They removed material there. Now, will that be enough to solve the, the three issues um, in, in the order of least important, the most important, was will it fit into my original paddle holster? Uh, can I get a speed loader in it? And the killer, can I unload the damn gun after I, after I fire it dry? Well, let's find out. On the first issue, no, because this material is still here on this side, even though that side is is a shallow. Um, again, that wasn't a big deal. If I'm carrying this gun, like if I'm, if I'm carrying this gun, I'm cowboying it anyway, you know, because that looks pretty damn sharp. And then when full comes, you know, spiced pumpkin spiced everything comes. I'm wearing a t-shirt and flannel over maybe a jacket. You wear this on the hip. You know, I think I like that look anyway. The second issue, the speed loader issue. Well, unfortunately, my Safari Land still will not engage. It looks like it wants to, but it won't. And the issue with that is, as you know, from the Safari Lands, they don't spin to release. You got to hit that center punch there when you push it on. And see, I'll prove it to you. And they go everywhere. Uh, it just can't get enough of an angle <clears throat> to engage that. So that won't work. But it came so close that it made me wonder, you know what, maybe I should invest $6.50 and go back to the old HK, yes, spin the dial uh, speed loaders that I hated so much. I hated those, these speed loaders when we had to carry them back when the world was black and white. We had to carry them with our revolvers, the NYPD. And as I think about it, the reason why I hated them so much, and you know what, out of curiosity, almost, but not quite. The reason why I hate him so much was because we used to, when we qualified, we carried, um, we qualify with wad cutter, you know, the, the ammo with, with the no point on it was flat. And the reason why we, we did that was because one, it was lower power, it was easy to shoot, so the scores are better because they hired morons. And two, um, because it made nice, anyone who's fired wad cutter is a paper target, so it makes beautiful, clean holes for scoring. Uh, so they, they, they had us use wad cutters. Well, you know, or load from the pocket. Now, if I could take you back in the wayback machine, imagine this. So you're, you're you're shooting and you're shooting and you're shooting. You go empty, and this is how this is how we emptied it. We didn't do the uh, that one hand bango thing. You would hit the cylinder release, push it through with your fingers, and do that. Which you could do with a 38 because this doesn't become as friggin' red hot as it does on a 357 Magnum. Um, I keep going side notes on side notes. The first time I fired this, I tried the old NYPD thing and I made a friggin' ring on it. This, these get hot when they 357s. So anyway, we'd, we'd empty and then we'd load from the pocket as they're screaming in front to us, you know, look up and load, look down at your target, look up and load, you bury your head in that chamber, cylinder will we'll, we'll bury, we'll be burying you in the ground type of thing. Then you go. When you went to your speed loaders, imagine trying to line up these shake. And again, the old HKS is they used to shake. Those shaky rounds with no points on, trying to load them up into the holes is like loading cats. I was like, how the hell did they expect us to use these things? Um, on these new HKS, or at least maybe for 357s, they're, they, they don't rattle at all. So, and plus they got points on them. So let's see, let's see if this works. Good so far. Good, no, kind of good so far. No. Okay. We'll, we'll mark that down as Possible. It's a loaded gun. We'll mark that down as possible, at least close enough for government work. But what I just did off camera there, the most important one. Look up and load. The most important one. It ejects the spent casings. 
So now this becomes an actual firearm again. You can load it and unload. You can start loading by hand, and if needs be, you can load it with uh, the HKS speed loader. So this is now a keeper, 100% a keeper. And I'll explain why. Although it's, it's obviously a compromise, it, it doesn't work with all holsters. It doesn't, uh, I love this HD camera. It doesn't work with all holsters. And the speed loader is kind of a hit and miss proposition. But again, speed loading, am I, am I really speed loading from, from bed after I just got this guy on top of me? Refer to the other video if you wonder what I'm talking about. Uh, but it does work with a speed loader. And it can be unloaded normally, which is, you know, the, the thing. The reason why I will go with this in this configuration is because of how it performs with the most important aspect of what a gun is, that is the shooting. This fits my hand better than any grip I have ever held in my life, including that 1911 that I love so much. It fits my hand perfectly. It allows me to bring it. It is so much more pointable. And this is the reason why, remember I mentioned it kind of follows that, te that, that, that tang that they have for me, if that's the right word. It follows the tang better than, than the old cowboy farmer style grips, which were, I think were, were patterned after like the handle of a hoe. Hoe. You see the, see the, the, the kind of the difference there? When you grab this grip, or any, any revolver, traditional revolver type of grip, where do you grab it exactly? Do you go high on the back strap like a semi-auto? We were trained when we were carrying revolvers. No, you, you're carrying a revolver a little bit lower, which leaves a lot of questionable space here. In, in, in a quick situation, you're grabbing it up here, and are you given a situation where you get that type of thing because you're up on the back strap, or do you have to really address the gun the way we, this is how they, they taught us to hold revolvers down lower to make it, to get the point. This thing, because of the angle and the fact that you can actually grab it in the dark, you're supposed to go high back strap on this because it makes it perfect. You go high back strap, look at, I'm, I'm up on the back strap, and it brings it up perfectly. The sights are where I want them to be, and it just points and shoots a lot, a lot better. It really does. So these grips are the winner because shot placement is the winner. It's more important than reloading. It's more important than anything. Shot placement, even with 357 Magnum, is what makes a gun lethal. These allow me to, and it, again, for me, with my hands, I've always complained about my, not complain, but I've said I've had big hands, you know? For me, these fill my hand. These allow me to get the grip that I need and instantly bring the gun to bear and make it pointable, bring that front sight on there. So now that's why I will, I will run with these. Now, as far as the grip themselves, I've seen videos on Badger grips where I think somebody complained that um, the, the seams were a little visible or smooth. I can also, I can say is, I mean, this, the, it's smooth. I mean, the seams are visible. Of course, the seams are visible, but this, you know, we don't live in a, in a cartoon comic book world. You don't put something on and the seam disappears. It's going to have a seam. But if you see, if that's a seam that you can live with, then by all means, go with the Badger grips. This is smooth. This is all smooth. You don't feel it in, in, in the finger grip portion of it. Um, it's a, it's a smooth grip and on this gun this now makes this gun What I consider to be the best version of a, of a fighting revolver uh, That I can at least afford because I'm not how many of these am I going to buy really? It points it carries it feels good in the hand and it's the right size I mean look this is a, a fairly large heavy revolver, but look at it look at the size of it. You, you, you can you can use this you can carry it you can control it you can point it um, with the Ruger, and as I, you know, as I was playing around before, I will say that there's something about a Smith and Wesson, Smith and Wesson trigger. It always is just somewhat smoother than any Ruger trigger I've ever pulled. Yeah, it, it's weird, but this what I will say about the, 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 this particular Ruger. After all the rounds I put through it, you can index. I can bring it to that spot every time. Without even looking, you can index that cylinder and get it to go every time. And again, the thing with this grip, it allows access to that hammer. This makes this a really, really, really nice gun. So this is uh, this is what I'm going to go. Maybe I'll maybe this gun will pick up a second job. Maybe I will when when the weather gets warmer, as you can see. Well, maybe not see, but here in the in the the People's Socialist Progressive Republic of New York, we're coming into the warmer weather in the summer months and this oppressive heat that we get up here. Um, I'm not. The only way I could hide this on me is if I stick it up my ass, which I'm not going to do. 
but maybe in the fall I will actually cowboy up and carry this thing because this is now a good fighting gun, a, a good package, a great caliber, and I like it. And you know, now that now that we're in HD, I'll address one other little thing I did too. You see my front sight. The one thing I didn't like about this, this is the base GP100. It came with these these trench rear sights and a fixed front sight. There were almost no options on, on these front sights. I couldn't find fiber optic. I couldn't find night sight. Nothing. Nothing. Because it's just got that little pin that, that you, you think he's dropping it. Now you think there'd be a million of them. Not really, no. And this thing came in a black, a black front sight. I couldn't see it for nothing. I tried painting it in white. Not so much. It looked like shit. Um, Ruber sells them with a red insert, but the red insert is like a, a, a maroon. It's just, it's almost as dark as, as that. So I decided to get a little cute, and I was going to make this thing neon colored. And you see now, it acts as kind of like a lightning bolt crackle thing going. I should actually make an industry out of that. How I did that was, um, well, that's my secret. But it was a happy accident. And rather than make it completely fluorescent by going over the accident, the wife actually said, that looks really cool. Why don't you go with that? So here you go. Here's my, my custom fluorescent, crackling, lightning, orange soda front sight to go with my GP100. And that is the complete review. If you're thinking of Badger grips, and if you think of a Badger sport grip, I can give it 100%. Yes, get it. For me, it makes this gun more pointable, more shootable, more usable, and it looks a hell of a lot better. And again, no problem with these, but the rubber is it's rubber, you know? This looks fantastic, and more importantly, it feels fantastic. It points, it shoots, it's great. All I can speak for is the Badger Sport Grip for the GP100. I make no claims on any of their other products. But if you are going to order this, save yourself a step, tell them to send it to you with a speed loader cutout. And uh, that's that. Very happy with the products. It product. If you think now this is something you want to do, uh, order them up because this is really a nice, nice, nice uh, package that they, a nice product they deliver. And um, questions, comments, anything else? Uh, hopefully I'm, I might actually have a new gun to review uh, uh, in a little while, if, if, if I could, uh, you know, liquidate some assets. Until then, uh, thank you for your patience. Signing off.